Now that Java is out of the way, we can install WebLogic. This one is also quite simple, but don't let your guard down, because from now on some configuration errors can be pretty hard to recover from. Start your virtual machine, open a terminal, log in as root, and execute the xhost command as usual. Then log in as Oracle and navigate to the directory we copied the WebLogic installation media before. This one is zipped, so let's unzip it. Unlike the other installer so far, this one is a jar file, so we'll need to use Java to execute it. From this point on, always make sure your network is enabled. Sometimes if you can't start the app and web server, it could be because there's no network available. Click next on the welcome screen. And here on the middleware directory, change it to home slash oracle slash middleware. There's no particular reason to use this directory, in case you're wondering. I just find it easier to use than the default. Uncheck the security updates checkbox. It's going to insist more than I use car salesman. But keep saying you don't want it and eventually it will let you go on. Here choose custom and click next. We don't really need to change anything but take a quick look to see what's going to be installed and then click next. Here we need to select a certified JDK. Click the browse button and find the directory we installed JRocket before. Once it's been selected and the Linux Open JDK is unselected, click next. No need to change anything here, but take notice of the WebLogic server directory. We are going to need it when installing OTM. Just click next twice to start the installation process. And when it's finished, uh, mark the run quick start checkbox and click done. On the next video, we are going to install Oracle HTTP server.